Good Wednesday morning. I'm Guy McPherson of Nature Bites Last, which you can find at GuyMcPherson.com. If you go to Guy McPherson upon release of this video on Wednesday, the 17th of March, 2021, you'll be able to find all the papers I'm referring to highlighted there. First up, from National Geographic, the headline reads, First ever study of all Amazon greenhouse gases suggests the forest is worsening climate change that, as with peer-reviewed article, was published on March 11th, 2021. The Amazon, here's the lead, the Amazon rainforest is most likely now a net contributor to warming of the planet, according to a first-of-a-kind analysis from more than 30 scientists. Into the paper now, the research published in Frontiers in Forests in Global Change estimates that atmospheric warming from all the sources combined now appears to swamp the forest's natural cooling effect. Lead author Christopher Covey, a professor of environmental studies at New York's Skidmore College, is quoted as saying, it's really hard to see how the net effect isn't that the Amazon as a whole is really warming global climate. This is huge, this admission that one of the two major lungs of the planet is actually a now a net contributor. The other lungs of the planet, besides the Amazon basin, is the oceans generally, with all that plankton and the coral reefs and so on. And we've also passed the point of no return with respect to the oceans, as pointed out even by the very conservative Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in their September 2019 report on cryosphere in the oceans. Of course, he says, the damage can still be re reversed, he and his colleagues say. I don't see how that's possible once a tipping point has been crossed, that there's no going back in the absence of a time machine. Says co-author Fiona Soper, we have this system that we have relied on to counter our mistakes, and we have really exceeded the capacity of that system to provide reliable service. So we can still reverse it, but we have greatly exceeded the capacity to provide a service. I, I don't see how that's not self-contradictory. The peer-reviewed article in Frontiers in Forests and Global Change called Carbon and, Carbon and Beyond, the Biogeochemistry of Climate and Rapidly Changing Amazon. It is written by 30 authors and also published on March 11th, last Thursday. From the paper, this from the net climate forcing at the basin scale section, this assessment is conservative in that it ignores additional factors and they include negative radi radiative forcing from the reflectivity of biogenic aerosols, in other words, the aerosol masking effect. They also ignore at least 39 initial additional greenhouse gases from the four that they include which, if I'm doing the math correctly, is not all greenhouse gases. It's four of at least 43 that we know about. So, mm, mm, that's what I have to say about that. From the final paragraph of the paper, following a decade of hope, and you gotta love that, following a decade of hope for a transition to a sustainable development pattern, rapid deforestation and land use change have returned to the Amazon. This resurgent change refocused popular attention on the fate of the basin's vast sea stocks, which is carbon stocks. Our current understanding of the biogeochemistry of climate in the Amazon, however, suggests that positive forcing from non-CO2 factors plays a large role in the regional and global climate system, now likely dominating the net radiative balance of the Amazon. In other words, the point of no return has been passed as exhibited by this excellent article, which focuses finally on more than carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas. Now turning to Nature Bats last, GuyMcPherson.com, and the information I provided on this topic, which includes a peer-reviewed article in Modern Concepts and Developments in Agronomy, published June 12, 
2020 entitled Trees Cannot Sequester Enough Carbon to Slow Abrupt Climate Change. That's a whole story right there. Trees cannot sequester enough carbon to slow abrupt climate change. It's too late for that. We're too far down the road, no matter where the trees are. An Edge of Extinction episode, a, video, a short video posted February 8th, 2020, called Edge of Extinction, Amazon Tipping Point, question mark. An, a science update from January 20th, 2020, science update, overheated forests becoming net carbon sources, question mark. That's from January 20th, 2020. From Nature Bats Last, in the climate change summary, long before August 2nd, 2016, when I stopped updating that particular essay, under self-reinforcing feedback loop number 22, we find information such as this. Drought-induced mortality of trees contributes to increased decomposition of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and decreased sequestration of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Such mortality has been documented throughout the world since at least November 9th, 2020, in Nature, the peer-reviewed journal, with summaries in the February 6th, 2013 issue of Nature for the Tropics, the August 2nd, 2013 issue of Frontiers in Plant Science for Temperate North America, and the August 21st, 2015 issue of Science for Boreal Forests. And I go on and on, quoting many peer-reviewed articles indicating that we passed the point of no return a long time ago in the Amazon basin and, and, and that it is indeed a net carbon source at this point, not a net carbon sink. And that's hugely problematic and indicates again what I've been pointing out for several years, the irreversibility of climate change at this late date. Thanks for tuning in to this science update. We'll try to produce another of these in about a week at GuyMcPherson.com. Thank you.